back to my channel. I am Ashley and in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about provider burnout. So with any job, I feel like in general, even if you love your job, when you're continuously doing something, repeating it, doing it over and over and over, you get burnt out. And as daycare providers, we get burnt out as well. I have been doing this for six years and I sometimes find myself burning out, but I kind of know when I'm getting burnt out and I catch it and I'm like, okay, we need to do something. And then I do some of the things that I'm going to be talking to you guys about in today's video, as well as the stuff in my other video. I now take three vacations a year before it was two. I just had one, I had one in March, I had one in June, I have my next one in December. I, I feel like that helps me. I feel like it catches me right when I'm about to burn out. I have a vacation, you get what I'm saying? That's already planned. And then it helps me and it re, that's my entire system and I feel a lot better for daycare if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. I have one, two, three, four, five tips that I'm gonna be talking to you guys about in today's video. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I have is to change things around in your daycare. So I just recently painted my entire daycare. I bought some new shelves. I am going to be showing it to you guys in a future video. It's not finished. I still have a lot of things that I want to buy for the daycare and a lot of things that I want to do to the daycare. But we did make a little bit of progress recently, so I'll have that in my next day in the life, which I plan on filming this upcoming week for you guys. But um, I did that because I've had the same paint. I've had a lot of the same toys and everything for six years, and I wanted a change, so I did that. But normally, like in the within the first six years, if I ever got bored of seeing the same thing, I would just change the toys around. So you can keep the same toys and once you change them around, you get to go into the room and see a different view. I not only do that in the daycare, but I also do that in my house. Um, this was in my bedroom. I brought it out to my living room. My couch is in a different area. Like I like to change things around a lot because I get tired of seeing the same thing. So if you're a daycare provider, try moving things around. Add something to your wall. Buy some inexpensive things to add to your daycare, maybe um, some wall decals, anything. Just change your daycare space up a little bit. I'm not saying to go full on remodel and renovate every single month or every time you feel like you're burnt out, but just buy things. If you saw, see something on clearance, go ahead and add that. I also feel like doing things for the holidays, for example, when it's spring or when it's Valentine's Day or when it's Christmas, when it's Halloween, add some of that to your house because you get to change the decor. I have a box and I have um, a lot of things for Halloween. I have some things for fall. I have like a table runner that it's not on my table right now, but once that season comes, I can add that and it changes it for me. So change with the seasons, change things in your daycare. Maybe it's not your daycare, maybe it's your house that's annoying you. Change things around because it does really help. <laughs> the next thing that I have is to incorporate your students into doing things that you like. So this is an example. If you like cooking, do some activities where the kids can cook with you. So for example, uh, get some pancake mix, get some water, and have them whisk it. Have them add food coloring to certain things. Have them roll dough with you. Like if you enjoy doing something, try incorporating your kids into it as well. I recently started going to the gym. I've been going to the gym consistently now for two months. I go and I exercise and I love it. So I like doing exercise. So what do I do? I exercise with my kids. We do jumping jacks, we do sit-ups. It's so cute to see them try doing push-ups. Like, and it's fun to me because I get to kind of work out, but I also get to incorporate that with my kids. So if there's anything that you like, whether it be crafts, if you're making something, try to add your kids to that as well so that you're doing something you like, but you're also having your kids do it and they're also learning things as well, if that makes any sense. You don't have to do this every day. You can maybe pick one day out of the week to do it, but it does get tiring of tracing every day, painting every day, doing things for the kids. You wanna do something for yourself too, so maybe incorporate something that you like with them as well. So the next thing that I have is to do something for yourself and feed slash fill yourself up with things that make you happy. So I just recently started, like I said, going to the gym and ever since I've started doing that, I feel like, it has helped me a lot. I get to get out of my house. I know that it's a ridiculous time. Every time that I upload to my Instagram, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you guys know, I go to the gym at, I get to the gym and I start working out at 4.30 in the morning. So I wake up at 3.50, four o'clock, I get ready and I take my pre-workout and I go straight to the gym. And ever since I started doing that, I feel so good. I look forward to going to sleep to know that I'm gonna wake up and go to the gym the following day. Nobody's at the gym, I'm by myself, so it's kind of like, what, you know, you're not socializing or anything, but I feel like I'm doing something for myself, 
I'm getting out of the house and they have a sauna, so I'll go into the sauna and I just sweat. <laughs> it sounds disgusting. I sweat, but it feels so good. And I'm seeing results, so it's making me feel even better. So um, I started doing that. If you wanna start going fishing, if you wanna start going to the mall, if you wanna start getting a pedicure, like do something for yourself. If you wanna start planning, wake up a little bit earlier to plan, like do things for yourself because when you're doing things for yourself, it's easier to give things to other people. I know it doesn't make sense, but once you start doing it, you'll understand it. And I just feel like it's very important to do it. I also do take, even before like going to the gym, like I always take one day a week to focus on myself. So I'll give myself a gel manicure every week. I have my own machine in here. I do my gel manicures. I'll get my, my roots done. I do have gray hair. I get my roots done. I'll wax my eyebrows. I do that also myself. Like. I take time to groom myself because when I'm groomed, I feel really good. When I'm not groomed, I feel like, oh my God, I gotta get it together. But I take time at least once a week to like groom myself and then I go to the gym and I do like to do things with my kids on the weekends. Like my, my sons, Anthony and Lucas, will go to the pool and because I'm filling myself up going by going to the gym and making myself look presentable, it's easy to push everything to the side and just focus on them. I hope that that makes sense, but just do things for yourself as well. The next thing that I have on my list is to learn to say no. I know that you're probably like, how does that help you with provider burnout? Learn how to say no. When I initially started my daycare, if someone needed me after six, I was like, yes. If someone needed me before 7.30, I opened at 7.30. If they needed me before, I was like, yes, that's fine. Oh, Ashley, can you watch them this Saturday? I was like, yes. Learn how to say no. When you start saying yes to everybody because you don't want to disappoint them, you're starting to overwhelm yourself and that's exactly what I was doing. So now, if I don't want to do it, I say no. Not even just with hours of operations, but it's also with policies. I had one time, guys, you guys might think I'm crazy. I, I think I told you guys this story before, but when I, um, I had a parent one time that was potty training her six month old. So I thought if I don't do this, she's gonna go elsewhere to seek childcare, right? So I was like, fine, I'll potty train the six month old. So she bought like a little potty. I had it in a corner and every so often when the baby was dry, I would take the baby and I would sit the baby on the toilet. Had I have told her, no, I'm not gonna potty train your six month old, he's not ready, that's not something that I can do having so many other kids, like that's, it's not possible. If I would have said no, I would have been so much less stressed and less overwhelmed. I felt like I needed to potty train this six month old. And I look back at it and I'm like, oh my God, the baby can't even walk and she wants to potty train the baby. Which I get it, I know that there's, um, there's this method, I forgot what it's called, I'll put it on the screen, it's possible. But that's not something that I wanted to do. So I could have said no. And guys, um, I forgot what it was. The baby ended up unenrolling, not because of the potty training thing. I think it's like they moved or something, right? And recently I have, this is between us, you know, just me and you. Recently I looked at the mother on Facebook and um, the baby was in pull-ups and in a diaper. And I was like, dang, I, I put so much effort into trying to do that for that parent and they didn't even go through with it. Like the kid's not even potty training anymore. And I was so scared to say no because I thought that that was something that she wanted when clearly she didn't even follow through with it, if that makes sense. So just learn how to say no, that's my point. Sorry for the story, but it happens and sometimes parents have some ridiculous requests. So not only, like I said, with hours of operation or watching kids on weekend, if they ask you to do something that you feel you can't handle, you can't do, or you don't wanna do, say no. And the last thing that I have is to maximize your time off with and without your family. So um, whenever you have a day off, make sure you're doing something. Plan ahead, see if there's something that you can do. Text some of your friends like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Hey, what are you doing next weekend? So you can fill up your weekends. Um, I have a lot of birthday parties that we do go to. We go see family. I'll go out with some of my friends for some drinks. Like I'm always trying to do things on my weekends and maximize my time off because it's refreshing. It's refreshing to get out. It's refreshing to do things. And if you stay home on your days off, you're gonna feel burnt out. Go on a walk, go hopscotch, go jump rope, go do something, but maximize your time off. If you are tired, sleep, if that's what you wanna do. If you wanna go to the beach, go to the beach. Like plan things for your days off and just maximize your days off and I promise it's gonna feel a lot better. And I noticed that 
um, when I do go out with my friends and when I go out for some drinks or we go out to the beach or whatever, my weekends feel longer. So I feel like I had a longer time off. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it happens with me. And then come Monday, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm ready. I had so much fun this weekend, ready to start to fill up my kids' cup and start to pour into their lives because I already took care of myself, if that makes any sense. So that basically completes today's video. I hope that I didn't talk too much. I haven't filmed in a while, so I feel like I'm a little bit chatty right now, but if you guys have any other tips as daycare providers when you guys are feeling burnout, what do you do? Let me know in the comments because I'm curious to know. Please subscribe to my channel if you guys have not already, and I will see you guys in my next video.